Hi everyone, for learning outcome number three of the male reproductive system, we're going to be focusing on the accessory glands. Remember that the spermatozoa is immobile until it reaches the prostate. And once it mixes with the contents of the accessory glands, but there is some fluids from the seminiferous tubules and the epididymis that help to propel the spermatozoa all the way to the prostate. However, the fluids contributed by the seminiferous tubules and the epididymis account for only 5% of the final volume of the semen, which is the final fluid that is released during ejaculation. Now, this fluid can also be called seminal fluid, which will be made up of a mixture of the secretions from many different glands, and each with a distinctive biochemical characteristic. These glands include the seminal glands, the prostate glands, and the bulbourethral glands. We can see them on these images. Here is the seminal gland, which can only be seen on the lateral view. The prostate gland is going to be located below the urinary bladder, also on a lateral view. However, on a mid-sagittal view, we can also see the prostate gland. And right over here, where we have the urogenital diaphragm, we can see the tiny little bulbourethral gland. Now, the major function of these glands will include activating the spermatozoa, providing the nutrients spermatozoa need for motility, and producing buffers that will counteract the acidity of the urethro and the vaginal contents. So let's take a look at each of these glands in a little bit more detail. The seminal glands or seminal vesicles are embedded in connective tissue on either side of the midline and they're going to be sandwiched between the posterior wall of the urinary bladder and the interior wall of the rectum. There will be one on each side and they will have a duct that will transport its contents into the ejaculatory duct which takes it inside of the prostate together with the contents from the ductus deferens. What is traveling through the ductus deferens? Immature spermatozoa and some fluid from the seminiferous tubules and the epididymis, but this only represents 5% of the total semen volume. Now the seminal glands are extremely active secretory glands as they contribute to about 60% of the volume of semen. Although the vesicular fluid usually has the same osmotic concentration as blood plasma, the composition is going to be quite different. In particular, the secretion of the seminal glands contains prostaglandins, clotting proteins, and relatively high concentrations of fructose, which is easily metabolized by the spermatozoa to produce ATP. And the final product will be an alkaline viscous or thick fluid. The seminal fluid is going to be discharged into the ejaculatory duct at emission when the peristaltic contractions are underway in the ductus deferens and the seminal glands. And these contractions are going to be under the control of the sympathetic nervous system. So when mixed with the secretions of the seminal glands, the previously inactive but functional spermatozoa begin beating their flagella and becoming highly mobile. Therefore, we can say that the spermatozoa will only become fully mobile once it reaches the prostate after it has mixed with the seminal fluid. Now, prostaglandins have two functions. They facilitate the sperm transport within the female reproductive tract via inducing the peristaltic contractions, and it also induces the sperm motility. With regards to clotting proteins, we have the presence of fibrinogen that will facilitate in seminal clotting after ejaculation. 
and this clotting of the semen helps to keep the ejaculated sperms in the female reproductive tract. If it is remained very liquid, it would easily come out. Therefore, it is a way of keeping it in the female body longer. And the longer it stays in the body, the longer the sperm stays as well. And the chances of fertilization will increase. And this is the whole point of the reproductive system, to give offspring, remember? Now, the role of fructose is to provide energy for the spermatozoa motility. Remember that up to now, the spermatozoa were immobile. But now that they have their source of energy, they can go crazy and start wagging their tail in happiness. Because once they get mixed with the seminal fluid, it most likely means that there will be an ejaculation and they have a place to go and maybe procreate. Moving on, we have the prostate gland, which is the small, muscular, rounded organ, as we can see from this image. The prostate gland will encircle the prostatic urethra, which we have already talked about, as it leaves the urinary bladder. The prostate gland produces this prostatic fluid, which is going to lead into a very weakly acidic secretion that's also milky. And it will contribute to about 20 to 30% of the volume of semen. In addition to several other compounds of very uncertain significance, the prostatic secretions contain what we call seminal plasmin, which is an antibiotic that may help prevent urinary tract infections in males. And these secretions are going to be ejected into the prostatic urethra by the peristaltic contractions of the muscular wall of the prostate. And lastly, we have the bulbourethral glands, which can also be called Cowper's glands. And these are going to be located at the base of the penis, and they're going to be covered by the fascia of the urogenital diaphragm. So if you look very closely, you're going to see that there are going to be these very tiny, rounded glands right over here. In fact, they're only about 10 millimeters in diameter, and their ducts will empty into the spongy urethra. So these glands, they will secrete a very thick, sticky alkaline mucus, and this secretion helps to neutralize any urinary acids that may remain in the urethra and provides lubrication for the tip of the penis. And this may also help with penetration into the vagina. So at the end, when we have all the glands coming together and producing what we call the ejaculate or the semen, and a typical ejaculation releases between two to five milliliters of semen, and this volume of fluid, which like I said, is called the ejaculate, will contain the following. So it will contain the spermatozoa, and a normal sperm count ranges from about 20 million to 100 million spermatozoa per milliliter of semen. It will contain the seminal fluid, and the fluid component of semen is called the seminal fluid. It's going to be a mixture of the glandular secretion with a distinctive ionic and nutrient composition. In terms of total volume, we're going to have seminal fluid contains the combined secretions of the seminal glands, which adds up to 60%, from the prostate, which adds up to about 30%, the nerve cells and the epididymis, which adds up to about 5%. Remember, nerve cells are present in the seminiferous tubules. And then the bulbourethral glands add the last 5%. In addition, you're going to have enzymes. And there are several important enzymes that are present in the seminal fluid, including proteases that may help dissolve mucus secretions in the vagina, in addition to the seminal plasmin, which we talked already about, which is the antibiotic that's secreted by the prostate gland, 
that might be important to kill a variety of bacteria, including Escherichia coli. So the semen has not only all the components to make sure that the sperm is able to thrive and survive and be able to get to the location where it needs to get to eventually fertilize the egg, but also it has certain components that will act on the female reproductive system. And we will talk a little bit more about this once we get to the female reproductive system in the next module.